What are we talking about? We're talking about Heaven's Lost Property. So you know what that means. Spenties! Spenties! <laughs> So we're talking about Heaven's Lost Property. I totally got my copy signed by Greg, because he's awesome. I told you I would get to it, and here it comes, just for you. It is definitely an Ichi, and if you don't want to call it that, call it a Panty May, call it a Harem May, call it a Pervy May, because it is. You're just watching this kid, Tomoki. He wants to be left alone. He wants, you know, peace and quiet, and he feels he never gets it. Well, he's about to get a lot less. Quiet house, get to read my porn alone. Every 14-year-old boy wants that. He's pretty normal. And then, you know, robot angel bitch falls out of the sky and grants wishes, because that happens all the time. If you had a really hot evil genie living with you, this is what it would be like. Hot, kind of dumb genie. And episode one is totally different from any of the other episodes because episode one isn't really super funny. It gets you thinking, holy shit, because the wish he makes in the first episode has consequences immediately. And you get to see him kind of break down and like flip out. And after that, it gets very funny and super ridiculous and kind of dumb. Episode 1 is also when he wishes to be the ruler of the world, and she figures the only way for him to be the ruler of the world is to wipe everybody else out of existence. So now he's the only one on the world. First, he wishes to undo this, and in doing so, she kind of interprets it as blow your brains out, and she almost does, which is fucked up. But like I said, the first episode is very unique but it actually gets you thinking about it, and then you kind of want to keep watching it based on what the first episode did to you psychologically, which is fucked you over. And then that never happens again! And then it's, you know, nonsense. It's fun nonsense, but it's nonsense. So now he's got Icarus, who identifies herself as an angeloid, and you really don't know anything else about her for quite a while. On the onset, you've got Tomoki, his neighbor slash pseudo girlfriend with the killer chop Sahara, his weird friend Sugata, who we literally know nothing about other than he's like kinda smart, sort of engaged to crazy, and lives in a tent down by the river and is obsessed with finding the new world, which we know nothing about other than but we're pretty sure that's where Icarus came from. He's looking for the new world. He's crazy and is looking for the new world. It exists, but he's still crazy. Mikako Satsukotane, who is the daughter of the head of the Satsukotane user good clan. She's a mobster's daughter. And she's also class president, of course! And she's an evil fucking bitch! She's fucking fucked up! I get it, you're a pot stirrer, and I normally like pot stirrers, but she's not awesome! She's fucking evil and messed up, and this is bullshit, and I would not be hanging out with her. No. What, oh, she's gonna be there? No. Mm -mm. Remember the guy she hired with the guns? Fuck that! I would've been done with her ass! The snowball war? The boot fishing was alright, but that wrestling was bullshit! The boot fishing was okay. And now you've got this angeloid who is able to grant wishes. He's got like a really hot monkey's paw. It's like a really awesome wish, but it still fucks you over. Tomoki totally has the best lines, and some of the best songs, and everything, alright? Tomoki is amazing. I love that he's just like a crazy perverted kid. I have no idea where his parents are, why he has enough money to give Angeloids allowance. He was like, here bitches, where are your parents? Your house is burned down like twice at this point. Where are your fucking parents? I just have money? I didn't see you wish for this money. And about halfway through season one, you get your second Angeloid, Nymph. And Nymph is 12, kind of annoying and like way too sexualized for being 12. You really don't like Nymph pretty much until Season 2. And then you finally start to like Nymph. But that's only because at that point, Astria has showed up and she's your third angeloid. And she makes all the angeloids fucking adorable. She's fucking great. Greg Ayers totally has the best lines until Season 2 when Astria shows up. And then Astria has the best lines. Oh my god, Astria is fucking hilarious. I'm sorry, Greg. People in Japan are way too complacent with the extraordinary. Why is nobody flipping out? Seriously, Icarus flies into town, nobody runs, nobody questions it, everyone's like, uh... 
That's a motor bond. And there's totally an OVA, the Angeloid of Clockwork, which we totally checked out, and it's pretty good. It's mostly recap, but there is new stuff at the end, and I'm okay with a mostly recap movie, as long as there is new stuff. And the way they did the recap was from another character that's sort of in it. Not really, you see her like twice, but the entire recap is from her point of view, which is cool, because now it's like a fresh perspective on it. It's not the same shot, just better animation. Animated, it's a different shot because it's being looked at from a third party, which is nice. And then there's new stuff, and the new stuff is kind of messed up. It is extremely episodic, except for like two to three minutes. They basically have nothing to do with one another, but only two to three minutes of each episode has like story bits in it. The two episodes I came away with, panty bombs and boob fishing. Boom! And boob fishing! Reeling in those tits. Yes, the, these are definitely my favorites, and I'll just randomly watch those. And if you randomly just pick an episode, you can. Because there's not really a story. There kind of is. But it's shoehorned and secondary to the panties and the nonsense. And the panties and the nonsense is just to be panties and the nonsense. It's not trying to be more than it is. If you're expecting more from it, that's your fault. The thing I do like about Heaven's Lost Property, it's not pretending to be something else, and it's just like, fuck it, we don't need a story. There is a story, but there may as well not be. What really makes this anime enjoyable is the script, particularly the English script. I did have the subtitles on, and it's very funny in Japanese, but it is way funnier in English. Oh my god, it is fucking hilarious in English. The music's pretty good. Stick around for each ending credit, because each of the songs is different and they all have kind of like extra scenes so you have to watch them but it's totally worth it it's pretty entertaining if you're a guy it's pretty funny if you're a girl you're not as offended as you might think this is actually my wife's kind of favorite right now I know right go figure the animation is great animation is really good in some points voice acting is amazing either audio tracked I found it more enjoyable in English I'm just saying there's a difference between what the hell when I did that you were mean and when I went in you were like oink oink Astria that is way funnier oh my god that was hilarious my official rating and my unofficial rating system totally unworthy and if you're not gonna buy it at least watch it on Netflix because it's on there right now you will enjoy it. This is Anime by Dave. I, of course, am Dave. If you have any questions, comments, confusions, suggestions, put them below and I will get back to you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Wow.